first thing I saw after immediately watching this movie, Guy Ritchie should have directed Assassin's Creed. Yup. King Arthur, Legend of the Sword is directed and written by Guy Ritchie and written alongside Joby Harold and Lionel Wigram and it stars Charlie Hunnam, Jude Law, among others. And this is a take on the King Arthur story you haven't necessarily seen before. His uncle betrays his father and so King Arthur grows up in the streets and he has to take the throne because it's his destiny and whatnot. We've seen this kind of story before but it's interesting to see its take on the King Arthur mythology. And I was very afraid to see this movie because I love Guy Ritchie and I love King Arthur and the Arthur Arthurian legends, but these two styles and substances for that matter don't really mix well. I'm pleasantly surprised, damn pleasantly surprised after this movie. The world building and mythology exploration in this movie are excellent, really. The style of Guy Ritchie bends enough to fit itself into this mythology and the changes that they make into the mythology are great themselves because they really blend into each other really well and they fit together perfectly to this story, to this film. I like the take he has on the mythology, I like the take he has on the characters, and I like the take he has to this story and especially the action sequences. I've heard complaints about the last two fighting sequences in this film seeming like video game cutscenes. Well, if any video game movie was like this, we would all like them because they were great, they were very Guy Ritchie and they were justification enough for the 3D in this movie. It's not worth paying 3D, but if you do pay 3D, you are going to be happy with the last two fighting sequences. Because the movie also increases in the use of fantasy in this world of King Arthur throughout the movie as the movie goes on and proceeds the fantasy element grows and grows and expands immensely throughout especially in the last fight and I really enjoyed it. They do seem like video game type of fights but they are great. I did love them in their way. That isn't to say I flat out love them. They are not the best greatest fight scenes I've ever seen but for a fantasy film a sword and sand in this case Boots film, I really thought they fit it, especially because it is Guy Ritchie directing this. He also has a great sense of style and uniqueness when it comes to chasings and all around action of all styles. He introduces elements of fighting techniques in this film that I thought they were going to be exaggerated and they really weren't. They were very much street fighting when it came to fists and kicks all around. The physical fights in this movie I thought were very well captured and they were very rough and greedy. They were not like technical martial arts. They were punch to face and kick to face. At times some blow really felt random in the best way possible in the sense that they were fight scenes from street fight. Charlie Hunnam is great in this role. I really thought he brought a lot of charisma to this version of King Arthur. He really brought a lot of pain to him, a lot of sorrow, and you really could feel for the character because of his whole story and I thought it was very well developed in that way, both the story and the King Arthur the character himself. And the all-around ensemble of this film works very well as well. I really like his comrades, his friends, you can really feel the chemistry of the actors there, and the characters themselves all have very very unique traits to them. I gotta say, the script for this movie is pretty damn great. And I don't mean in the sense that it's going to win any Oscars or even be close to that, but the way it works characters and story and the dialogue and chemistry and development of said characters is great. The British humor is here and is here to shine and it shines through. The bitter banter between all the characters goes around really, really well. There are some very good laugh out loud moments between characters and some great reactions from characters and the storytelling devices for the most part work really well both in terms of developing the story and characters and also for the humor of it all. The special effects all around are great and the pre-production in this movie must have been Painful. I was talking to a friend of mine, we studied special effects together and we were talking after the movie and the pre-production to see this designed and come to life, even though it is special effects, most of these sets and most of these landscapes must have had thoroughly analyzed pre-production and they are designed beautifully. I thought all around the creatures, as I said the landscapes, the buildings, just everything all around looked great. There are some minor flaws when it comes to something that really isn't real like smoke in some parts and if you've seen the movie you know what I mean and sometimes fire when it comes around like someone throwing a fireball at someone else. It doesn't look the best but it's not flat out bad either. I thought the editing was the most damaging thing to this film. Not necessarily that it is bad editing but there are just some editing choices that as I said even though Guy Ritchie's style bends enough to fit into this world there are some times where his 
editing style comes in and kind of interrupts and takes you for a second out of the movie and you're trying to think, oh wait, what is going on? How did we get here? And then yes, they go back to it and explain it and you can feel the Guy Ritchie style in there and you can see how he tried to blend it in, but in some points doesn't really fit in. There are also one, maybe two scenes where they ended and I was like, oh, we needed a little bit more on that scene and we did not really finish it. I also gotta commend this, but the sound design of this movie is probably some of the best sound design I have heard this year alone. Seriously, the sound design, and I'm not even saying the score, although the score itself, I am downloading it right now. The sound design is all around borderline excellent. As I said, there is some blending of the mythology and being a fan of the King Arthur mythology, I really loved some things that they did with the mythology, putting some characters in some situations or places that you don't necessarily see in the original King Arthur stories. There is a high fantasy take, as I said, throughout the movie and it increases. And the thing I loved most, and I won't spoil, is about how the sword goes into the stone in the first place. I thought that was genius. And I couldn't even think why someone didn't remember to do that take before. There are some characters missing and I really felt them missing. For instance, there's a mage in this movie and it's not Merlin and she is an apprentice of Merlin and I kept thinking, why isn't Merlin here? Throughout the movie, there was no justification why Merlin couldn't be here himself, and Guinevere is also missing, unfortunately. But I gotta commend Jude Law as well. Not only his acting, because it is excellent, but also his character. He is not an excellent villain, but he is way beyond just generic. By the end of the film, there comes one specific scene, if you've seen the movie, you know what I mean, where you can really feel his pain, and he is even more despicable for feeling pain. Again, if you've seen the movie, you know what I mean. I like how they paid homage to the Adventures of Merlin series by putting Katie McGrath in this film. I really liked that, it was a small touch but a nice touch. There is a celebrity cameo which I thought they were going to exaggerate further on into the film, but they really didn't. I was so happy with that. All around this is a very solid movie, it's entertaining and for high fantasy fans like me, you will be satisfied and you will be happy that a King Arthur movie is as good as this one is and it features so much fantasy as it does. With a great director like Arichi, I'm actually pretty confident so far that he's going to do a good job with Aladdin. I'm still hesitant, but I have more confidence now. King Arthur has great acting, great character development, a great sense of humor, like British humor is, and Guy Ritchie pays very good homage to the mythology and bends his style enough to fit into this for the most part, like 85-15%. 85% it fits, 15% does not. But with that said, I will say that King Arthur Legend of the Sword is most definitely a martini. It is a good time, anytime. What did you think of King Arthur Legend of the Sword? Is it your favorite King Arthur movie? Is it not? Let me know your favorite King Arthur movie in the comments below. And as you go down there, check the description and go join the beautiful Geek Community Facebook group. The link is in there. As always, my beautiful geekies, you guys are the freaking best. I love you all so, 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 so much. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for watching once more. And until my next review, you stay beautiful and you stay geeky. And if you haven't done so yet, click the subscribe button and the bell so he can be geeky. United!